Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to draw a histogram for a given data. In this video, we are going to learn how to draw a cumulative frequency table and curve for a given data. Let's begin with the cumulative frequency table. Cumulative frequency tables. A simple cumulative frequency table contains four columns. Here is an example. In the first column, you have the max. In the second column, you have the frequency. The third column will have the max less than. And the fourth column will have the cumulative frequency. This is how a simple cumulative frequency table looks like. Let's assume that these are the max scored by some students in a test and these are their corresponding frequencies. So we can see that the max are grouped. The first one is 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and it continues up to 90 to 99. And each mark has its corresponding frequency. In a simple cumulative frequency table, we will have the max, the frequencies, the max less than, and the cumulative frequency. As we can see here, the max and frequencies will usually be given to us. So we will have to fill the max less than and cumulative frequency column ourselves. Let's start with the max less than. How do we find that? The max less than are the upper class boundaries of the class intervals. The max less than are the upper class boundaries of the class intervals. We have different class intervals here. We have 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and it continues to 90 to 99. The point says that the max less than are the upper class boundaries of these class intervals. From the previous videos, we have learned how to find upper class boundaries. I hope that you understand that by now. I'll go through it quickly in this video. To get the upper class boundary of a particular interval, you first have to select two consecutive intervals. I'm going to select 10 to 19 and 20 to 29. After selecting two consecutive intervals, you subtract the upper class limit of the first interval from the lower class limit of the second interval. Here I selected 10 to 19 and 20 to 29. The upper class limit of the first interval is 19 and the lower class limit of the second interval is 20. So I'll subtract 19 from 20. 20 minus 19 is equal to 1. After that, we will divide the result, which is 1, by 2. When we divide 1 by 2, we are going to get 0 0.5. To get the upper class boundaries, we will have to add this 0.5 to the upper class limits. The first interval is 0 to 9. The upper class limit is 9. So to get the upper class boundary of this interval, I will add 0.5 to 9. 9 plus 0.5 will give us 9.5. So it means that the upper class boundary of 0 to 9 is 9.5. The point tells us that the max less than are the upper class boundaries of the class intervals. So here, we will find the upper class boundaries of these intervals and that will give us the max less than. The first one is 9.5. The second one will be 19 plus 0.5, which will be 19.5. The next one will be 29 plus 0.5, which is 29.5. So it will continue on and on. So the next one will be 39 .5, 49.5, 59.5, 59.5, 69.5, 79.5, 89.5, and 99.5. We are done with the max less than column. Let's move on to the cumulative frequency column. The cumulative frequency of a class is the accumulation of the frequencies up to that class. 
So to get the cumulative frequency for a particular class, we will add all the frequencies up to that particular class. The first frequency is zero. So it means that the cumulative frequency will be zero because there is no frequency before that. The next frequency is five. As we have learned here, the cumulative frequency is the accumulation of the frequencies up to that class. So it means that the cumulative frequency for this particular class will be zero plus five and zero plus five will give us five. The next frequency is eight. The cumulative frequency for this class will be the accumulation of the frequencies up to this class. So it will be 0 plus 5 plus 8. And that will give us 13. The next frequency is 14. So the cumulative frequency of this particular class, which is 30 to 39, will be the accumulation of the frequencies up to this class. So that will be 0 plus 5 plus 8, which we already have as 13. So it will be 13 plus 14, and that will give us 27. So the next one will be accumulation of the frequencies up to this class. So that will be 0 plus 5 plus 8 plus 14, which we already have as 27, then plus 24. So 27 plus 24 will give us 51. So the next one will be 51 plus 30 which will be 81. The next one will be 81 plus 8, which will be 89. The next one will be 89 plus 5, which is 94. The next one will be 94 plus 4, which is 98. And the last one will be 98 plus 2, which is 100. So we have now completed the column for the max less than and cumulative frequency. This is how a simple cumulative frequency table looks like. Now, let's learn how to draw a cumulative frequency curve. Cumulative frequency curve. On the cumulative frequency curve, the max less than are plotted on the horizontal axis, which we usually call the x-axis, and the cumulative frequencies are plotted on the vertical axis, which we usually call the y-axis. This is the cumulative frequency table we completed in the previous video. We are going to use the information in this table to draw the cumulative frequency curve for this particular distribution. We have learned that to draw the cumulative frequency curve, the max less than will be on the horizontal axis and the cumulative frequencies will be on the vertical axis. So we have the graph sheet here. The max less than are on the horizontal axis and the cumulative frequencies are on the vertical axis. The scale I'm using is 2 cm to 10% on the max less than axis and 2 cm to 10 students on the cumulative frequency axis. We have the points here, so we are going to plot them. The first point is 9.50, so when we plot it, we are going to have that here. The next one is 19.55. We have that here. The next one is 29.513. That will be here. The next one is 39.527. That will be here. The next one is 49.551. That will be here. The next one is 59.581. That will be here. The next one is 69.589. That will be here. The next one is 79.594. We have that here. The next one is 89.598. That will be here. And the last one is 99.500. And that is here. After plotting the points, you join them with your free hand to get the cumulative frequency curve. In some questions, they will tell you to draw the cumulative frequency polygon. If it's a cumulative frequency polygon, then in that case, you have to join them with a straight line. So you use your ruler to join them. But if the question asks you to draw the cumulative frequency curve, you join them with your free hand.
to get the curve just as we have done here we will have to choose a title for our graph the marks given to us were marks scored by some students in an examination so my title will be cumulative frequency curve showing marks scored by some students in an examination so this is how to draw a cumulative frequency curve for a given distribution we started by drawing the cumulative frequency table we have learned how to find the max less than and the cumulative frequencies and after getting the max less than and cumulative frequencies you plot the max less than on the horizontal axis and the cumulative frequencies on the vertical axis after that you join the points with your free hand to get the cumulative frequency curve just as we have done here thank you for watching this video subscribe to this channel for more videos in the next video we are going to solve a question on drawing a cumulative frequency curve for a given distribution bye bye